another sunny, beautiful day on La Vuelta. Destination Buriana, 186 kilometres in total. Just one categorised climb along the way. But with sunshine and a tailwind, surely this would be one for the breakaway. Who on earth would be tempted with the GC men and their helpers really having a day off, potentially waiting for Havalambre on stage six? This is what lay ahead, heading almost due south before cutting to Buriana. That Category 2 test coming just a little bit too far away from the finish, but with a non-categorised climb as well, leading to a downhill and just 15 kilometres to the line, maybe, maybe we're in for some drama. Well, they tried over the first 17 or 18 kilometres to establish a breakaway, but none were acceptable to the fast men's teams. They were all marked out, and in the end it was Eric Fagundes, the Uruguayan, who went off up the road. And so it was we settled into an amble of a day, I think, but through some spectacular scenery. In the end, the categorised climb was too much for Sepulveda to be ignored. He went off the front, charged into the gap, found Fagundes out on the road, said, get onto my back wheel. He couldn't stay there. And so the maximum mountains points went for the man in the King of the Mountains jersey, extending his lead in that competition. The downhill run was something of a test. We were hitting speeds of around 80 kilometres per hour, but ultimately we were heading for flat land and, of course, a big sprint for the day. Favourite, of course, Caden Groves. But an intermediate sprint was going to be too much of a temptation for some of the GC men. In particular, Remco Evenepoel led the day by six seconds at the start, decided to take a few more seconds on the bonuses. Six going his way. Caden Groves just tucked in behind, didn't want to waste the extra watts, but said thank you very much for the points. 17 he garnered for finishing second on the intermediate. Could he add to his tally at the end? Roundabouts were the problem, plenty of them as well, to squeeze and elongate the pack as we came in, and some of them more slippy than others. Not a nice scenario to be in, and Mylan Menton, for a lot of destiny, one of the sprint favourites for the beginning of the day, sadly ending on the tarmac. He was OK, but his challenge was over. And so it was an arrow straight finale we were heading for. They had a big turn to actually get to it. Only 650 metres would be straight. In the end, it was a question of who could light it up and indeed cope. After the last turn, a right-hander that gave us our first sight of the finish line. Well, around about the three kilometres to go marker, Geraint Thomas said to Philip Ogana, go for it, and he was biding his time. Caden Groves was tucked in behind his teammate. Garner went for the centre of the road and in fact it was all to come down to the throw. In the end, the green jersey took it by just a third of a wheel. Garner so close and a fast finishing Dries van Gestel getting very, very tight in, making up the podium for Total Energies. Job well done in all departments it seems for Caden Groves and Alpersin de Koenig. They lost a man on that crash, in the end, they didn't need him. Super work, Caden Groves delivering yet again. Dainese finishing in fourth place. Again, a disappointment, slightly out of position, and maybe again hampered by the incident. Groves taking it ahead of Garner van Gestel, Dainese, Aski, good finishing. Turns likewise as per yesterday. Gonzalez, Jeffrey Soup, Esquera also in the frame. Remco Evenepoel enhances his lead overall with a very big day still to come. 11 seconds is advantage, courtesy of the bonus seconds he picked up on the intermediate. And this is what we'll be dealing with on stage six. It is Havalambre, always Ghana's drama, and it is an incredible peak with much of the finale run over 13% gradients. It is going to hurt. Who's going to come out on top? You'll have to tune in to find out.